Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, we are here to talk about DNF, obviously. My name is Daniel Mach. I've been with Red Hat for, well, a decade. Uh, I've spent 10 years uh, in release engineering, and I've been leading uh, the software management team for about two years. Uh, I'm mainly focused on DNF, uh, and I will have this uh, presentation together with Jaroslav Raček, who uh, is uh, the longest serving DNF team member so far <laughs> for three years. Uh, he's been focused on modularity uh, and also some optimizations and performance tuning. So what's on the agenda? First of all, uh, we will remind what DNF is, then we will provide uh, several details about the DNF stack and some statistics. Uh, then we will quickly go through the achievements we have made over the last year. We will touch roadmap and future plans, and then there will be space for questions and answers. So what is DNF? It's a package manager. You may know from Fedora, and it replaces YAM3. It's also available as YAM4 in Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 Beta. That's for mainly for continuity and compatibility because the existing customers are used to use YAM, so we provided that, but it runs on the DNF backend and it's essentially the same software. And it's also available in other distributions such as Magia, OpenSUSE, or Yocto Project. Uh, this is a brief DNF stack overview. So on the left side, uh, these are packages we maintain. You can uh, see all the sources on GitHub, and they are mainly also available in Fedora. Uh, those which are uh, in, in the vault, uh, these are the main packages uh, you may be using uh, frequently, at, at especially the DNF and the plugins. There are also some related projects, uh, such as RPM, Libsol, PackageKit, etc. All these belong to our ecosystem, but we don't maintain them directly. Jarno, could you provide some details on the numbers? Um, uh, information about uh, three of our projects. The first one is DNF. We can't hear you. <laughs> we have some issues. You need to speak up or speak yeah. differently. Um, DNF uh, is a Python-based project. Uh, it is uh, forked from YAM in 2012. And from that time, we already have about uh, 4,000 commits. Uh, DNF plugin. DNF plugins uh, is, again, the Python project. Uh, and it um, uh, the uh, the last one, what I want to uh, highlight, it's uh, libdnf. libdnf is a C, C++ uh, library that it uses uh, as a uh, backend not only for DNF, but also for the micro DNF and uh, package kit. Uh, what is most important, uh, uh, Okay, maybe. Uh, let, yeah, maybe let me continue uh, until the technical issues get resolved. Uh, <laughs> check, check. Uh, uh, contributors, and for the other two projects, it's about uh, 60. And as you can see, even in the last year, we have uh, so many active people. <laughs> um, uh, about our achievement, uh, uh, I have to think about uh, modularity. A quick technical break. Uh, so maybe let me cover this slide before the, your microphone gets fixed. Uh, so modularity. Uh, we have shipped uh, modularity tech preview in Fedora 28 that was mainly Python-based. Uh, the code was merely a proof of concept, and we have rewritten it completely for Fedora 29, which is based on the libdnf 
C slash C++ implementation, which is also available in PackageKit and other software. And we have also made some improvements in the stack, uh, mainly the memory issues, uh, memory leaks, uh, double freeze, and a lot of issues uh, leading to sec faults. Give it a try. <laughs> Is it on? Okay, so let's switch the sides. <laughs> okay, probably that's that was the issue. Okay, uh, let's for the next time. Uh, next slide, please. All right. Okay, uh, I pick up for the performance uh, presentation three versions. The oldest one is from the Fedora 26, the middle one is uh, from the Fedora 27, and the last one is just a uh, recent release uh, into uh, Fedora 29 and uh, RHEL 8 beta. Yeah, as you can see, during the time, already the first command provides a slightly improve in the performance. But as you can see, in the, for the DNF update command, uh, we have a huge difference between the version from Fedora 27 and the latest one. And similar approach, you can see the, with the commands that use the security options, like the security bug fix. The last uh, example, here it represents how uh, DNF handles uh, a lot of arguments. In this, in this example, it was 3,000 arguments. And uh, already for the uh, DNF uh, 251, we can say that already this uh, DNF, that sounds like pretty slow, it's much faster than YAM is. Okay, maybe let me explain uh, the uh, latest uh, results. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit over two seconds, and those two seconds is the time required for loading all the repositories, which is something we cannot probably get rid of, but uh, basically, we, we can't train from these times uh, almost nothing, because we are down uh, to the overhead. All right, next slide. Okay, that's mine. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so the first point is the new history database. Uh, I'm actually the author of the change, and I can proudly say that we have managed to break quite a lot of stuff in the Fedora 29 pre-releases. But luckily, uh, Fedora 29 final release is uh, almost without any issues, and everything seems to be working fine. And why we were doing that, uh, the original software database or the history database contained a lot of different tables in the SQLite database, and we decided to redesign it to make it better and make sure that it contains the exact information that is needed across the DNS stack and that we know what the information is there and how to use it. Before that, it was quite a black box and we really didn't know what's that all about. We also made a design decision on libdnf, so we ended up coding that library in C++ and using SWIC uh, to generate bindings. The main reason for that was to uh, gain uh, native objects, type containers, and have bindings that are easy to generate. So basically we write C++ classes and uh, we easily export them into Python. We have also introduced C plugin API, uh, which is uh, something quite new. It's quite... Uh, I would say dangerous to use at the moment because we will get to that in the next slides. We are planning uh, bigger changes in the C API and if anyone uses this LibDNF C API with all the uh, library in C, uh, we will change that. So, uh, this is the existing DNF stack uh, infrastructure our architecture, uh, as you can see, it relies on libdnf, uh, and libdnf has quite a long history. Uh, it's made of original uh, DNF backend, that's the Hawkey library, and then there's the C API, the libhiv, which originally comes from PackageKit. And we ended up with these two libraries in a single source tree, and the merge hasn't been finished 
finished yet. So we are currently working on uh, making all these functions and all the code better. And that leads also to a situation when microDNF and PackageKit, they, they use the uh, libhiv part and DNF is based on something else and cannot use the C plugins, for instance, at the moment. And yeah, that will tell you uh, what's the bright future. Yeah, this is the picture how we suggest uh, the libdnf should, should appear in near, near far future. It means we want to create a, a C++ API and uh, on top of that, uh, we want to uh, generate or as a wrapper C API or Python API or Python binding, and of course the plugin API. The advantage is, is directly represented here. That as you can see, as you can see, plugins API plugins can handle it also not only libdnf, uh, microDNF package kit, but also can be used or will be used uh, with the DNF. It means. It will uh, some troubles from our from our uh, uh, from the components uh, that use uh, uh, plugin. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it could uh, it could disappear. Mm. Please, next one. What is the most important thing about this is that if something breaks, it breaks in one place, and we don't have to fix in three places as today. Yeah. All right. And when we start to think the the plans for the next releases, for the Fedora 30, uh, we plan to deliver uh, Z Zchunk support. Zchunk is a new compression format designed to allow uh, deltas for met uh, metadata. And I, as I can say, I think this is pretty promising uh, technology. How to decrease uh, the downloads for the for the metadata. Additionally, according to the Fedora plan, uh, plans, uh, uh, we will drop uh, Python 2 support. For the Fedora 31, uh, we would like to deliver new improved modularity. According to the feedback, probably some of us will provide uh, from the Fedora 29, 30, or even RHEL. Uh, additionally, we would like to uh, prepare um, for a re redesign of the uh, var cache and uh, this should result in the shared cache with the micro DNF and the package kit. And additionally, uh, we have a huge plan with uh, CA stack. Dan, please, can you provide the information? Sure. Uh, so we have decided to rewrite our uh, CI tests um, because we want to improve the performance, uh, separate the tests from the environment so we can run them anywhere. And this is basically uh, for you to let you know that if you have anything that is built on top of DNF, you have any tests, reach out to us so we can eventually run your tests to make sure we don't break your software. Okay, let's back uh, for the plans. Yeah, for the Fedora 30, we still have a plans. Yeah, <laughs> we want to deliver this shared metadata and download RPM. It means uh, one download for the package kit, the DNF, and market DNF. And especially people who work on the workstation, I think they will love it. Yeah. Also, as uh, I mentioned, the unified code base. This is the target Fedora 32, and it means sta new stable API. Uh, new SWIG bindings, and additionally, yeah, there is the downside, probably for the, some of the users. Uh, we want to uh, drop the hockey sack package because it will be replaced by the new stable and supported API. Okay, uh, this actually looks quite simple, but uh, we need to redesign quite a lot of stuff under hood without uh, making any bigger changes uh, in public interfaces and without breaking anything. So this will probably take some time, but the goal is to have single unified library. And the future vision. Uh, this is just uh, an overview. We have touched these topics in the previous slides. So we are aiming to have all the business logic uh, moved from DNF to libdnf. So DNF stays as Python API, uh, as a compatible API with existing tools. 
but all the business logic will go to libdnf, so it's available to microdnf and package kit, possibly other software. Uh, microdnf will gain more f features, uh, so basically you won't see any difference if you use uh, dnf or microdnf. The only thing we know about that is not achievable in microdnf is obviously the Python plugins, but everything else should be uh, most likely doable in microdnf. And it's not going to replace DNF. We will maintain both at least for some time. And we are also thinking this is, you know, something, nothing more than a vision that we may create a DNF daemon replacing possibly the existing Python DNF daemon in Fedora, which is the backend for the uh, for DNF Dragora. And we may also integrate this daemon with Anaconda, which. Uh, helps them uh, to avoid forking the DNF process and handling, uh, handling everything by themselves so we, we can offer them a service eventually. And again, it's not going to replace anything else in the stack. It's an additional service you can use, but if you don't, have to, if you don't want to, you don't have to. And this is the final slide, so thanks to the DNF team who actually helped us to get here and made all the hard work over the last years. Also to the community and contributors who reported all the issues and bugs and special thanks to Neil Gompa. Some of you know this guy. He actually spread DNF into three other distributions. So definitely a big thanks for doing that. So this is time for questions and answers. Do you have any questions for us? Mm -hmm. But uh, what I noticed is it's still taking, I think Fedora 29 is on uh, 4.0 or something, it's still taking a lot of time. Is uh, DNF update info? Okay, DNF update info takes uh, quite a long time to execute. Uh, which Fedora was that? Uh, was that 29? So, okay, we will look into that. Uh, it's related to the security uh, filters. We have tested that and it seemed to be working fine. Um, maybe if you could uh, drop a bugzilla for us so we can uh, reproduce that on some uh, data or something. Or maybe if you, if you can share the expectations with us through bugzilla, that would be really helpful. Well, you, you drop down the time from 40 seconds to two seconds. <coughs> I would expect the same here. Uh, yes. But you know the thing is that we, we typically, we are not optimizing everything. If something uh, doesn't work as expected, then uh, we analyze that and fix that. So basically based on any, any reports we can, you know, we, we probably need just the command and the environment. Yeah. And just we, we, just we my Bugzilla and we will look at exactly the versions we need and. Yeah, especially this guy is interested in that. He, he does all the optimizations. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the question is whether the libdnf work will impact the size of uh, containers. Uh, I think the answer is no. Besides, uh, maybe maybe the microdnf uh, binary will slightly grow, but I don't expect anything else because all other functionality is in libdnf already. So I don't expect any any big changes in the size. And eventually, you will get a fully functional DNF in the container with no additional overhead. I know you're the guy who actually helped me to fix all the issues with software database. <laughs> Uh, yes, that, 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 that is the goal, but we, we need a couple of years to get there because uh, if you look into the sources and you see all the co possible code paths, it's not nice. And we want to have a single code path for everything and all, everything documented. Just the question Just. was uh, whether we will have any documentation. The answer is yes. <laughs> Any other question? 
All right, so that's it. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much.